All right, so here's my uh, Class E guy with the sick fit. This guy, again, kind of stopped playing with him for a while after I uh, started messing with music. Still need to interrupt it. That's what those two wires are. I uh, just got it going down to a bypass capacitor at the moment. And the thing about this is that wire down there, it's my normally what would be the antenna or the... Uh, current transformer feedback but it's just grounded out right now so it's not going to be using feedback it's just going to be running off the uh, VCO on the CD4046 when using straight feedback you don't really have much of a choice as far as the frequency goes but with this deal I can adjust the frequency to below resonance or above resonance blah 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 I can sort of see what's going on there I got the scope hooked up right now use this supply let me put it at like uh let's put it about like 16 volts and that's going to be i've got a little uh digital readout on there now to show the current so i'm gonna cut that on it's pulling like 1.8 amps or so that's currently how it's switching so right now we're at about closer to three megahertz and that's just how i've tuned it all right very low small output if I start increasing the voltage then basically that drain voltage is just gonna start shooting up that off cycle pulse so right now we're at 20 volts per division so that's about 80 volts right now that I've got it at say I cut that back down about like that so when I tune it down so I'm gonna drop the frequency down then you see it starts to get more resonant so when I go back to where it was it goes down now I'm sweeping above resonance above resonance barely got a little something there and that's how it's switching when I start sweeping back down then that right there is about the point where at about 15 and a half volts about three some amps I still get all right switching then as I go further down see what happens start really hard switching at that point and I'm below resonance so I'm not doing anything so it's pulling low power switching very poorly when I go way above resonance it's pulling less power but I'm not really switching as bad and then when I go back to tuning it to where about it's the best right now, that's about what it starts looking like. And then we start pulling probably about the peak amount of current. Yeah, so about the peak current, that's when you're going to see probably the best output. And because this is not uh, self-resonant, you can see what happens, you know, detunes. So it's going to do that either way, unless, let's just say I bring it back to this really bad switching right there, and obviously you see what happens, it actually gets into tune, or close to it, as I'm loading it. So it's just not really being loaded properly at the moment, I can bring it into tune. So basically that means that um, when I bring the voltage up, that's when my switching is going to improve, right? So I'm a little bit too far back now. So let me bring it to something right about there. So I'm at 20 volts. And as I increase the voltage, about 24, see the waveform starts to improve a little bit. 27 start to pull close to four and a half amps. So again, I'm still too far back So something about that type of switching let's say it's just what I'll have to deal with At the lower voltages, you know, like 15 volts put it back something like that, you know Actually, let's bring it back a little bit more. I'll say something like that it's probably what I just it's just what I have to deal with running that voltage with this particular tuning and then as I go up closer to my target voltage right I'm at 30 volts now 
the, my supply can't take that much. So let's just say about 26 volts. And you can see the switching starts to improve. That's because my output is increasing. It's getting better in tune. You can see I'm at sort of a compromise now. I don't know if I can show it both. All right. Sort of at a compromise where it doesn't, oops, doesn't detune completely loading it like that. But again, that's I need to uh, fiddle with it some more to get it the best tuning. So I mess around with it right now. Right now I'll probably get about the best output with it switching a little bit hard. When I tune it for about the best switching, that's about what it looks like, right? So again, I basically just have to tune it for a target voltage. And the way this is, I'm only about halfway up to the target voltage, right? So supply keeps kicking out all right so now I've just split the supplies again since this guy wants to die let me use him to drive the uh, logic see the uh, consumption on that use this guy for your coil so cut just the logic on see about 2.85 megahertz you know, it's pulling about uh you know 220 milliamps something like that and that's a 12 volt regulator again. So the 12 volt regulator is powering the gate driver and the uh, CD4046. We've got a 5 volt one for the uh, Schmidt trigger. So the Schmidt trigger is just really being used. I can't even really remember what the hell I did, but I did some kind of wonky stuff here to get the signal uh, looking the way it is, uh, which isn't so great, but let's just say uh, about. 2.85 or so is where I'm going to have it at, and then I'm going to turn this on, so about 18 volts. So again, same deal, um, if I tune that, switch better, the uh, blue, the drain is at 50 volts per division, so about like 75 or something right now, and again, I'm just swinging the pot to change the frequency around. You can see right about there, it looks like it's about the best output. So you're dealing with the fact that right now it's got a certain resonant frequency. Uh, but then you've got this loading going on in the output. So let's just say I get it perfectly tuned at this particular voltage. That's about 2.85, right? And that's how it ends up switching because that's how I've got this thing tuned with that particular L1 inductor and the shunt capacitor across the drain and the source of the MOSFET. So, let's just say what, what happens if I was to leave it right there and then start cutting the voltage up a little bit. I'm going to have to move my hand. So basically what happens is, let's say at 30 volts, still switching about the same, now about maybe two, or one uh, 20 volts on the drain, but I can actually still tune it by changing this pot to get a little bit better output if I wanted to. I'm not going to notice such a big change now because I haven't changed the voltage too much. Well, let's just say right about there, my peak current output, so that's right about there. And I'm a little bit under, I'm closer to 2.8 megahertz, right? So that's how it's switching now. So again, basically what I have to do is deal with at 30 volts, it's switching a little rough. Let's just say like about how it was with that output so as I further increase the voltage let's say I'm gonna put it at 36 now and it still continues to switch a little better because the output is about 165 watts or so and tuning it now it switches the best still highest output about 4.6 amps or so now it's dropped to below 2.8 megahertz
the resonant frequency with this particular loading in the whole network right so close to 200 watts so again I've, I've tuned it to close to 50 volts right so that's just how that works so let's just say I tune it right about here to where it's switching pretty well the uh, gateway form kind of flattens out as I move it left and right kind of you get some ripple on it you get some you know a little bit of wonkiness misshapen but right about there is about the best I can tune it with this particular loading at that voltage 36 volts I need to put about 10 more volts on it or so to where the output not only grows but then the resonant frequency changes to where all this particular tuning comes together to where it'll give me a nice looking switching waveform at you know 46 volts or so 50 volts maybe right so that's just how that is to where now with that particular tuning that I've got it at let's just say let's just put it right about there right 36 volts 40 or 4.6 amps or so so now as I start cutting the voltage back down and we're gonna see that waveform get real dirty and nasty all right so even I had my arm there close to it helping it out Where you just have to deal with that and now I naturally kind of want to retune it to get it running the best now at 22 volts with it switching a little better but again if I leave it there and then cut the voltage all the way back up it yet again is gonna not be switching right like it's gonna be switching the same roughly if I increase the voltage now like I'm doing right but now all the way at 35 volts I don't get anywhere close to my highest output it's just the way that is I have to tune it back yet again like that now I'm pushing you know about an amp more or so I'm getting closer to my uh, desired output so again this thing is just real it's iffy sometimes right for the 12 volts cut it on okay. and still kind of tune it let me see So the free air, you know, do a few amps. Yeah. Hold on the arcs. Oh, kind of have to detune it a lot, I guess. So, this is how that goes. So, uh, with this setup at the lower voltages, it wants, you know, closer to a higher resonant frequency, which makes sense because the self-resonance there is not dropping a whole lot due to the massive loading of the corona right and uh, let's try like seven volts I need about nine really to get it to bust out free air. And again, where it actually needs to be set, which is about right there, you know, really don't get anything to free air horrible switching until start raising the voltage up a whole lot. Let me 
see what happens. All right. whole progression there from low to high or low to higher close to 200 volt pulses on the drain now right 175 pretty good output bring it all the way back down right but let's just say at lower voltages I kind of have to deal with that like 24 volts kind of have to deal with that with the uh, bad switching if I'm going to leave a constant tuning, if that makes any sense. 